don't have trousers. I'll try. I'll try. Well, I realize this is the very, very last presentation of the conference, and it's also one about lean theory. So um, I really appreciate that you're all here to listen. It's about supply chain management in construction from a production theory perspective. Despite the fact that I normally write papers more focused on implementation and more related to practice, this little piece of research did come up from um, something happening in construction, some misunderstandings about the concept of supply chain management that you see at the lower tiers of the construction supply chain. What I mean by that is the mainly the collaboration between main contractors and the suppliers. And um, in previous papers, I have elaborated on the fact that the maturity of the supply chain on the higher tiers is quite mature, but implementation of supply chain management at the lower tiers remains limited. So, so uh, main contractors are willing to implement supply chain management. They're willing to collaborate. They're also more and more interested in supply chain management but the uh, implementation stays limited to project-specific approaches. It stays limited to um, inventory management, to logistics, to um, um, off-site production, whereas the concept is so much more. It's so much more if you look at other industries. It's so much more. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of research attributes that to the peculiarities, to the characteristics of the construction supply chain. What are these? Well, it's been often said, well, in construction, you have a fixed point. So you have the construction site that makes it different than a factory or somewhere where you produce at one fixed, yeah, as I said, fixed point. And here it's always a changing, but still a fixed point where everyone, everything comes together. It's temporary. It's non-repetitive. It's unique. You know, it's always a changing team. So you always have um, yeah, the reconfiguration you have multiple projects at the same time, so you have to manage multiple projects that are not aligned, that are often uh, parallel. It's engineered to order. It's based on two types of processes, small batch or job process. In some production strategy, other, um, some standards, it's also sometimes it's described as uh, project related, so project based. And it's worked on by several workstations at the same time in suboptimal conditions. So in a factory, you try to create optimal conditions, whereas on the construction side, you're sometimes with weather and other circumstances, you are um, forced to work in suboptimal conditions. And this is what is described by Laurie in another paper as uh, peculiarities. And because of these peculiarities, we need to organize production and a supply chain in a different way, and we have um, related this production, this way of production, to these basic characteristics. And it's often referred to as a transformation concept. If you look at production theory, there's three perspectives, and one of them is transformation, and this is what construction industry, the conventional type, is often the one uh, that it refers to. And because it's been criticized a lot, in the years there have been many correctives that have developed based on the other principles. So based on uh, value or based on flow. And supply chain management can be seen as one of these correctives. It can be seen as um, maybe in some cases as a new type of or different way of construction management. And that brings me actually to research question because um, despite the fact that it's seen as a correctives, as I said in the beginning, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the concept. It goes from the big thing as in um, what, what should we do with the concept to implement it? Should we adapt the concept from other industries to, uh, to, uh, to be specific for construction? Or should we actually change and adjust construction to be able to adjust to uh, implement the principles? And also, but if you look at, at the production theory, there's also unclarity about whether it is based on flow principles or whether it's based on value principles. So that brings me to the question, like if you would analyze the concept from all of these perspectives, if you would analyze it from transformation, from value, from flow, how would it look like? 
what are the main important, what is the concept, how would you conceptualize it? What is an important principle? So what are important principles from each of these perspective that we could use to support implementation and construction? So it's going back to the basics of um, understanding the concept. Because main contractors, as I said, they're willing to implement, but because they're in an environment that is considered pe peculiar, they might not be able to do so. And before starting with the analysis, before showing you the analysis, there's two, uh, two points that I would like to share with you. One is, I said it already, I will, um, I will analyze it from three different perspectives. So it's transformation flow value. I won't elaborate further on this because most of you know it, but this is, this is the basis. And another point is, and it sounds very little logical, but every production process exists from uh, input that you transform and it creates output. And um, this production process exists out of different sub-processes. So these sub-processes together form this big production process. And in supply chain management, and especially in an industry like construction, 80% um, of these sub-processes are outsourced. So 80% of these sub-processes are outsourced to a supplier or a subcontractor that does part of these sub-processes. So that's the, those two points are actually the basic for the analysis. With one rule in supply chain management that most of these connections are long-term collaborations. So if we look at supply chain management from a transformation perspective, these are processes that I just showed you are considered independent from each other. They're considered transactional. They follow each other one by one. And if you want to make the overall production process more efficient, you need to focus on the efficiency of a sub-process. If you want to minimize the cost of the overall production process, we should focus on the minimization of each of these sub-processes. In construction at this point, in a lot of examples, we do it by, low, by procuring by for lowing bidding, low bidding. So we procure as low as possible, we, um, and that's how we minimize the cost. With supply chain management, it's because of the long-term collaborations, you're able to actually support your suppliers by focusing on efficiency. So can they somehow make their process more efficient to be able to produce more value for a lower cost? So you do it in a different way. Another aspect is that from, the pers from this perspective, supply chain management does acknowledge relationships. But as I said before, they remain transactional. So it's, um, it's not about the, the relational relationship, it's about the transactional relationship. But you have the benefit, because you have a supply chain, you have the benefit of organizing um, clusters. So which of them belong together, and uh, are there any benef benefits of, as I said, of clustering them. So from this perspective, um, it's already a different way of looking at production management. It's an alternative of looking at the transaction. If we look at supply chain management from a flow perspective, here the total system perspective is becoming even more important. Um, because you look at the entire production flow. You lo look at all the different sub-processes together, the entire flow, but not as a series of contracts, but more as a um, as I said, one flow that it belongs together as a total system. So not every transaction separate. And the other thing is that in conventional construction, we focus on a project. The project is the aim. Where supply chain management, especially if you also focus from a lean wave, um, is more about the product. And it's about all the sub-processes organized around the product. And here it's actually where also interdependency comes in. So whereas in the transformation concept, it was a transactional um, relationship, here supply chain management already acknowledges interdependency and is about integration. And that means that actually uh, 
as I said before, the total system perspective, you focus on the overall efficiency of the supply chain. Not, so not of one step process, but of the overall interdependent uh, supply chain. And you use flow related principles. So it's about lead time reduction, it's about reducing vari variability, etc. If we look from a value perspective, this is where actually, yeah, value perspective is the golden triangle, as Ferg already said. It's about cost, time, and value. Um, sometimes this is where the concept value chain management comes in. You know, some, some authors, some uh, researchers think that supply chain management is only the flow one, and they um, focus then on value chain management. But supply chain management from this perspective is about this value and is about quality, all these three points of the um, triangle. And it says that all um, suppliers need to contribute to value in their in the best possible way and all uh, yeah in the best possible way and to create to maximize value creation and that means a collaborative customer focus so not just focusing of the, on the next customer because every company has their own customer but this is really from the total system perspective what is your ultimate customer and what are we delivering for and how can we produce a high quality of all the different sub-processes and not just focus on delivering on time and within budget, as mostly we do in construction, but also on quality there. And this is summarized in this table. You can't read it, but it's in the paper where um, in this column you see the conceptualization described in a short way, and in the last column you see different principles that I just mentioned that could lead to, um, that could serve as prescriptive um, uh, for implementation. So conclusions, well one general thing that um, applies here is that the main difference which applies to all three perspectives is that it includes long-term collaboration. So it doesn't matter which of these perspectives, but that's a basis, so it's the overarching thing. Clustering, as I said, uh, transactions, sub-processes around the supply chain. Each of them focuses on a different aspect. So where transformation focuses on minimizing cost and transaction, uh, flow perspective focuses on uh, the, pro the total system and the production flow, and the value perspective, as it, the name says, on the value. And yeah, we saw an overview of the differences and the key principles. And the most interesting thing for me as a practitioner also is these key principles because that might help the main contractor to um, understand and to actually transform these principles into interventions. What are the interventions I could do as a main contractor to improve collaboration and to, um, yeah, to create a collaborative supply chain? So that pr they could be used prescriptive and I think it's very important to realize that we should not only focus on the flow part, but on the entire, all these three parts, so all three um, views. <laughs>